Okay, does that sound better? Because there was no sound before. <laughs> uh, let me know if you could actually hear me now. Sorry about that. Okay, great. Yep. Sorry, we'll redo that intro there. <laughs> There's always something with YouTube Live, so... <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Sometimes when there's, like I have a secondary camera up here, I have a camera here, uh, OBS will default the sound if something's not plugged in to a default device. So this microphone was plugged in, it was not plugged in, I plugged it in, I guess it didn't think it was there, it went to something else. So, let's start over. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve, welcome to another Mac 84 live stream, and uh, we're going to be recapping some Macintoshes today. Um, this is This is kind of fun because this was... The first Macintosh I ever tried to recap. Uh, so if you go back to episode one of my channel, back when I was actually you know, numbering episodes, um, this was the, the first Macintosh I ever tried to recap. And we'll take a look at it. I don't think I did a terrible job. Um, but yeah, there's, it doesn't fully work. So there's some problems with it. <laughs> Sorry about that, Greg. But eep! Hopefully, uh, hopefully you have a good rest. Uh, it's a bit early. No, it's not, not too early, but okay. <laughs> okay, so I, I have my desk clear of all my soldering goodies. We'll get to that in a second, uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about these machines. So we're going to have some fun here. Uh, we're going to uh, keep reaching for the wrong mouse, uh, and we're going to learn something about these machines here. So, all right. Oh, geez, yeah, that, that's not fun. Uh, you can see... Um, I was producing the thumbnail to this video, and I got a little carried away, so uh, I was late. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he's an Uber driver when he picks up Macintoshes. That's what he does. Okay, so um, these machines are pretty cool. Um, and oh, I forgot to send out a tweet. I knew I was forgetting something. Sorry, guys. One second. I'm so unprofessional. I know. Just terrible. <laughs> I always forget to uh, do something, whether it's sharing a, a link in the MacAc Discord or something like that. I always forget to do something. So let me, let me post this to Twitter real quick. Guys, talk amongst yourselves. You ever have a, a Macintosh 2 or a small Macintosh 2 model like this, 2SI or the full Mac 2? Would love to hear about it. Okay, there we go. And come on. <laughs> Sometimes my phone just like freezes at me. Let's see if it actually went out. Oop, oh, I think it did. Okay. Turn this on, do not disturb. I don't want my phone so laggy today. But anyway, all right, cool. So, uh, back to the Macintoshes. Let's see, anyone respond here? I did in school for a word processing course. Cool. Um, uh, Josh, you should be able to find the Mac Mini, <laughs> for, determine if the Mac Mini is a PowerPC Mac Mini or not. Uh, if you want a tip, I'll show you. So... The PowerPC Mac Minis are slightly different from the Intel ones. So here we have two G4 Mac Minis, and here's an Intel Mac Mini. The Intel Mac Mini has this little black infrared port here. That's for the Apple remote control. The G4 Mac Minis did not have that. Uh, also, the later Intel Mac Minis look much different. But uh, that's a giveaway there. So if you see the front and you see this little black dot, uh, and I'm sure the ports on the back are slightly different too. Now make sure you don't mix up the power supplies for that because uh, they take different power supplies. Okay, um, cool. I mean, they'll be the same look, but different wattage. Okay, um, sorry, we're getting distracted here already. <laughs> um, so today, uh, we're going to be looking at these Macs. So the Macintosh 2CX uh, was the first uh, family computer uh, that uh, we owned. So um, it's very nostalgic to me because this computer is something that uh, I spent a lot of time on. 
Uh, I do have two of these. I don't know where the other one is. It might be still at my parents' house. I'm pretty sure I have two of these because I know I have two of these and two 2CXs. At least I thought I did. Uh, so maybe I'm, my brain is getting a bit mush here. Um, so I already took the lid off of this. Um, the power supply is off and the, the um, hard disk caddy and all the, the plastic and everything is out of there. Oh, hey. Sorry that... Uh, yeah, yeah, The uh, I just sent it out. I was late. Sorry about that. We didn't get started much. So basically just talking about these beautiful Macs here. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, the 2CX was the first family computer we had. Um, there's the board of it. These are silly to, easy to take apart. I mean, there's one screw at the back, which normally you won't even find the screw because uh, people were so eager to upgrade these machines and play around with them that they took that screw out and they just left the top on. So I'll show you a side by side because the, the case is identical in case I probably, I actually probably have the, the top swapped on these. But uh, if we take a look here, we have the little screw port there. You just lift these up and there, instant access to the computer. You have access to everything you have, you need to have here. You got the power supply. You got your, your three Nuva slots here uh, on the two, CI, we have a, a, a cache slot there. Um, we have your memory banks, the hard disk. Underneath the hard disk is the uh, floppy disk drive, and here's the power supply. Uh, and the speaker is, of course, right here. So you pretty much have everything you need. Um, and yeah. So um, very similar design on the 2CX. Um, pretty much the same, except for a few things that I'll mention. Um, Okay, again, we're not going to deep dive here, just giving you an understanding. Uh, we have three Nuba slots there, and uh, your memory banks here, floppy port, SCSI port, uh, power supply port. Um, you'll notice, if you look at the back, these machines look awfully similar, except there's one omission. Can you spot it? Can you see what's different between these machines? Not something huge, but it is noticeable. You might see a gap somewhere, right? right here right here so the 2ci model has built in video this model came out later the 2cx model does not have built in video so you need to use one of these three new bus card slot slots to put in a video card like this so if we put in a video card you see that that will take up that slot there leaving you two remaining slots um, what was nice about the 2ci is even if you were using this as a server or uh, something else, you still had onboard video. You could fill up three of these slots with networking cards or additional video cards. Here you were kind of stuck because one of those video cards was always being used up by, uh, one of those slots rather was always being used up by a video card unless you ran this thing headless or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something important to note about these machines especially if you're picking them up used and you don't have one of these new bus video cards because these are getting a little hard to find as well um you got to be prepared for that because there is no video port on here uh you may be, be confused because the floppy port on the left here looks very similar to the video port here and this is just an external floppy disconnector uh where you can plug in an external floppy drive um but yeah you just want to make sure that if you're picking up one of these that you have a monitor connector there and whether it's in a, a new bus card slot like this or whether it's built in to here. Um, later models like the 2SI have built in video port as well. Um, but the 2CX is kind of very similar to the Macintosh 2, its bigger brother, which had no new, no uh, built in video uh, capabilities, but it had many more Nuba slots. And if you saw my uh, previous video there um, uh, about uh, recapping Macintosh 2, you would have seen that. Uh, what is the other port on the back? Well, we'll go through all of them. How about that? Because I sometimes make assumptions and think that everybody is crazy like me and, and knows these things like the back of my hand. But uh, let's let's go through. Um, yeah, ta if you're talking about Panther, that never officially came out on a DVD at retail, but maybe there's a maybe there's a version that somebody cobbled together that came out on three CD-ROMs, and Tiger was the first to come out on a DVD. All right, we're off topic, but anyway. Uh, so from the left to the right here, let's get a, a close look. Let's take the camera off the tripod, why not? Okay, so on the left-hand side, we have our power button that will uh, activate the power supply when that's plugged into the machine. We have an external floppy disk drive port, the same that the Apple 2GS takes. Um, and then there's a SCSI port, so that's a 25-pin uh, DB25 uh, SCSI port there. 
to the left and the right here, uh, respectively, are the printer port and the modem port. These are essentially RS-232 serial ports in a mini 8-DIN connector that Apple used. Uh, we have a sound output port. There's no microphone connectivity here. Uh, so if you wanted a microphone, you'd have to... Uh, You'd have to use uh, like one of those Nubus card slots to add some capability. Or there were some serial to audio adapters as well. Uh, then we have two ADB ports, which is interesting. I always found it interesting that there were always two ADB ports. Um, I'm actually not not 100 sure on why they decided to do that. Because uh, ADB you could easily daisy chain. Maybe they were just saying, hey, you know what? Might as well give you an extra port there. Um, but ADB is daisy chainable. So if you had uh, a keyboard, you plug a keyboard into there, and then there's an ADB port on it and uh, usually two ADB ports on the keyboard. You can plug in a mouse and maybe a, a joystick or a graphics drawing tablet or whatever. But it's nice that they gave you two. They did phase that out on the later machines, though. Um, so we can see that the 2CI here has an identical array of ports with the exception of that monitor port. Uh, to the left of that is a SCSI port, and to the right of that is a serial port. But right in the middle is that monitor port. And Jay, you could take a look at these serial numbers here for your collection. Uh, I believe that's F as in Frank, 12191L as in Larry, 4716, and the serial number here is, let's wait for the camera to focus, come on, come on, maybe, maybe, no, you don't want to focus because you're a silly camera, even when I use the manual tools to help this camera focus, it likes to be a pain in the butt, okay, maybe, huh, let's focus on my fingers, no, not going to do it for you, huh, wow, wow, yeah, I can send him a pic later. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the difference between the ports on these devices. So, yeah, that's, that's basically an introduction to this. So what I want to do is show you um, basically how these machines work right now. <laughs> uh, and I'm putting work in air quotes for a reason. <laughs> Such pretty fingers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a whole sort of use for these ADB ports. Could have been for dongles for software protection, etc. So that's, that's a good point. Um... But yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not complaining. Apple doesn't give us any ports now, but I just always found it interesting as a kid because I would plug in a keyboard, there'd be an ADB port on the other end. Could be for a trackball or something else too. So, all right, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, I'm going to plug in the 2CI first just to talk about it for a second because uh, you can see this one's missing the power supply. Uh, I think there is one over there, but I know this one is labeled working. So these are very, very simple to get out. And I'll show you how to take it apart while we're, while we're doing this. Um, so it's, it's, no, it's no problem just to take it out um, at all. So let me just uh, take a look here. Uh, I did recap this one, um, although I, th I think also there's a problem with the new bus slot. Um, it wouldn't surprise me because the capacitors are very close. Uh, three of the capacitors are fairly close to those new bus slots. And at least two of them might have leaked. So I'm just going to get my uh, SCSI 2SD adapter here so we can uh, have a successful uh, boot up. Uh, if I could find uh, where my little SD card adapter went. There it is. With our little SD adapter. I'm sorry. Does ADB supply power like USB and firework? Yes, it does. Uh, it supplies a very little amount of power, just enough to power something like a drawing tablet or a mouse or a keyboard. Very little amount of power. Not as much as USB, I would wager. Um, don't quote me on that, but uh, I don't believe that is uh, a, a, a fair comparison because ADB is a very different technology. Um, I'm just looking under the pile of stacks of things that I place precariously around my desk um, as things always go missing. So let me just move this a little closer. I see my adapters. Let me just go grab them. Okay. <laughs> Jay probably stole Steve's lasagna. No, he did not. <laughs> I'm not annoying him. I sometimes just keep talking and uh, I... Why is there toilet paper on the desk? Because I use that instead of tissues to clean up this crap. I'm not using expensive tissues to wipe down capacitors and dirty boards and stuff. So uh, I have my SCSI 2SD adapters here. Um, I have to label these little discs here, these little SD cards that I just refer to as discs. I'm a silly person. Okay, so um, I believe this one should work fine. Well, we'll try. We'll try. Uh, I have to label these because uh, I think we'll try this one. This one will work better. 
Um, homework disc? I'm very confused. Um, okay, and uh, what else do we need? We need our little power cord, uh, which I don't want to misplace. Uh, which, <laughs> uh, did I misplace it already? Oh, shoot. Um, I need a little power cord for the SCSI 2SD adapter. Um, let me just, there, there's a lot of machines behind me, so I'm just trying to, trying to maneuver. One second. I'm looking for that little power cable. Um, I have another one upstairs if I can't find it. I'm just trying to see if it's here. Oh, Apple said it was five volts. Okay, so that's a similar enough voltage to USB, but not uh, as far as the milliamps are concerned. Uh, I'd wager USB could power much faster things. Oh, here we go, here we go. It's just hiding behind here. There's a little adapter we need. All right, so we're gonna use our SCSI 2SD adapter. Um, make sure we have it plugged in correctly. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Hey, Bruce. Um, you didn't miss too much, so I was just blabbing about uh, the Macintosh 2CX and the 2CI. So on the table here, we have a 2CI here and a 2CX here. Uh, both I've recapped uh, about two years ago or so. Um, so, yeah. Um, what I'm going to show is why I need to recap them. Uh, again, uh, because these are the first machines I ever did. I had no idea what the heck I was doing. Uh, let's move this over here. And uh, there are some problems still with these machines, unfortunately. So uh, we will uh, get to the bottom of it. So what I'm going to do is uh, remove the hard drive, which has a smiley face on it because it works. And uh, we're going to just use our SCSI 2SD adapter because I don't trust that smiley face. <laughs> it may not work. And we're missing our SCSI cable, isn't that great? So, um, it's a problem with my machines. I rip something out, I replace something in there, and then we have some missing SCSI cables. But, no need to fear. Uh, there are plenty of other machines I could savagely pull a SCSI, SCSI cable from uh, as I look around and eye my next target here. And I see one. Go. Nice long SCSI cable. So we should be okay as long as we use one end and then terminate it by using the other end. Um, this is always fun because plugging the SCSI cable in is actually. Oh, that's weird. So I must have replaced the floppy uh, disk cable at one point because there's actually two in here. We won't need to really use that right now, so we'll ignore that. But. Alright, so we have our SCSI cable in there. Audio is, is a bit quest, Matt, but mic is super directional, so as soon as... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh, this microphone is a little directional, as Jay mentioned. Uh, let me just make sure that OS X did not decide to lower my volume randomly. Um, let's double check. It did! How about that? Jeez. It's the same machine. I shut it down when I'm done, and then, yeah. Uh, I have a wireless set of headphones, but they don't exactly work with this version of Bluetooth that I have on this Mac. So, yeah. Yeah, and anything with a battery is going to be iffy. I mean, I do have a nice pair of headphones, but yeah, I'm not going to wear them for eight hours straight. <laughs> All right, so we're going to plug in our SCSI 2SD adapter here. Hopefully the audio is a bit better for you guys. If it's too loud, let me know. I appreciate the feedback because I'm not listening to it, so I don't know. Uh, some Macintosh systems will supply enough voltage for SCSI, uh, for this SCSI 2SD adapter actually, which is nice. Uh, not all of them do. So what I do just to be safe, I just plug in the little power adapter here. You just want to be extra careful. There are four pins here. You only need to supply power to two. If you supply power to four, you could actually burn the thing up. So. Just want to be extra careful there. So this is all plastic here, so we're just going to let this little um, drive sit here. 
And we'll just pretend we don't have a huge SCSI cable sticking out the back. How about that? So I'm going to turn this around. We're going to leave this video card out because we don't really need it on this model because we have built-in video. Uh, I'm going to use this little adapter here. I'm going to use this little adapter here. Um, is there a difference in the cap kits? I actually do not know, but Bruce, if you're paying attention, uh, Bruce has an awesome website that actually lists every capacitor needed for every Macintosh. I believe the 2CI and 2CX are very similar, if not the same. There might be one or two caps different. Also, depending on the revision of the Macintosh, one may have a different cap versus the other. So you might want to uh, just check out Bruce's website there, recapamac.com.au. Just click on that. There's a little resources guide in the drop down menu, and uh, you could actually see all the Macintosh capacitors uh, that you need to replace, all the capacitors for uh, this particular system. And in fact, yeah, so Bruce uh, said he'll, he's actually going to be adding part numbers soon, which is nice. But I'm going to be fancy here, and we're going to. Uh, let's see if this will let me do it. There we go. So, that's not exactly what I wanted to show. Uh, there we go. That's not exactly what I wanted to show either. There we go. So, um, here is Bruce's website, and it's very zoomed in at the moment. Hold on. There we go. So, Bruce's website is very nice. Uh, you can scroll down, you go to resources. And uh, if I go over here, I can see Macintosh 2CI. And uh, does he not have a 2CX on here, or am I just going blind today? I might be going blind. It's very possible I might be going blind. Uh, if he doesn't have a 2CX, I'm in for a bit of trouble, because I rely on Bruce's guide a lot. But here he has a nice image, and he has a nice PDF you can download as well. <laughs> Sorry, no 2CX. Okay, that's all right. I'm going to download that guide because it's going to be helpful probably because the majority of the capacitors should be the same. Uh, the replacement capacitors I put on the board are still there. Uh, I'm going to guess there's something maybe different with this. Maybe there's, maybe it's not so much the caps that I need replacing. Maybe it's the uh, traces or something. But we will see when we get into that. So, okay, let's hide our, our window capture here. and Be sure to bookmark Bruce's site. <laughs> he just needs a photo of a beautiful 2CX, and he'll get one of my horrendous board, and he'll have to he'll have to fix, uh, fix Photoshop that board up. Okay, so um, yeah, for first time recappers, um, you know Bruce will answer this question, but I'm gonna I'm gonna actually say uh, probably what Bruce is thinking right now. Uh, I would not recap a Macintosh as your first system. Uh, especially like a Macintosh LC where a lot of the caps are close together. Uh, get something that you don't care about, something that's maybe broken, something you have parts for. Um, yeah, Quadra 700 that doesn't need the recapping. Uh, like an old VCR, an old DVD player, an old PC motherboard. J just something that is junk, that you, you can't break. Uh, you're obviously not going to test power on it or anything. Well, maybe you will, but um, get something out of the trash, an old DVD player, an old VCR, uh, an old satellite box, something that you could test your soldering skills on, uh, that you don't care if you screw up, and, you know, it's just something that's disposable. I mean, it's perfect way to, to test your skills on, something that's, you know, uh, that you don't care about. Because then when you do something um, on a uh, computer you care about, you're going to be much carefuler, much more careful, I should say. So, yeah. All right. So let's continue here. So uh, I'm going to uh, position the camera here so we could uh, see both the screen on the left uh, and the Macintosh 2CI here. And uh, I'm looking behind me because I had a keyboard. Where did the keyboard go? And this is not like Bruce's mouse, which is in plain sight um, from his Macintosh Plus recapping video, which uh, most of you were probably watching and was a, a good tutorial on recapping the analog board on the Mac Plus. Um, where art thou keyboard in thy mice? Uh, let me just go grab one. There's a pile of them over here. Okay, so we got our ADB cable. This is actually a very liberally long ADB cable. <laughs> you 
Yeah, why don't you try and recap a, a Quadra 840 AV that has a, a a five volt fault through the entire system. That's a fun one, not. All right, so we'll plug in our very long ADB cable and we have our beautiful, uh, but slightly yellowed Apple extended keyboard too. Oh, listen to that, that's beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna plug in our ADB cord before we turn on the machine. Okay. Oh, sorry. There's a lot of uh, chats to catch up with here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, cool. So I'm going to switch this to our VGA input. And uh, we're going to plug in the power cord here. Now, one of the symptoms of this machine before I recapped it for the first time was actually it wouldn't turn on. You'd have to sort of let it sit with the power cord and let it like charge. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was a bit annoying. <sighs> so um, yeah, this should just boot right up uh, because it, it is recapped. The problem I'm having is with the new bus slots. So uh, this is the 2CI, we'll get to the 2XI, but uh, let's see what happens. So the speaker works. SCSI 2SD adapter is flashing away there. And hopefully this screen will turn green in a second to signify it sees a video core, a video signal there. Maybe. Let's give it a reboot. <laughs> it doesn't want to listen to the keyboard to reboot. Uh, maybe that ADB port is dodgy, who knows. And use the reset switch then. Thankfully I just go boop and do that. Or maybe the video on board isn't working. I honestly uh, can't remember. I'd have to go back and watch my video from geez, what was it, 2017, 2018 and figure out what happened at the end of it. Because um, I think the 2CX I couldn't get with, uh, with the new bus card slots, but I believe that was the issue with this one too. But it wouldn't surprise me otherwise. Huh. All right. Um, yeah, the SCSI 2SD card is, is flashing away there, but um, it almost looks like it's flashing in a pattern, which means it may be a little confused. Hey, Matt. Hey, Brock. Everyone's joining the chat here. We're having fun today. 2CX, 2 times video is a little bit different to the lighter ones. What adapter do you have? Oh, the exhaust fan is blowing on the mic. Sorry about that. Uh, I have a few different adapters, so we'll use a few of them. Uh, let me uh, turn the machine off. <laughs> That's right. The uh, power button is like screwed in there. So I'll just unplug it. All right. So uh, I do have a few different little adapters here in my little drawer of tricks to the left. Um, let's see. That's uh, VGA to DB15. Uh, this one's for Performa. That's a DVI one. Yeah, we'll try... We'll try this little black one that usually works out pretty well. Uh, there is no dip switches on this one, but I do have I do have one with dip switches. Uh, this one seems to work fine with one of these little simple adapters. I think because these are hard coded for 640 by 480 because that's when they were built. Uh, but I'll bring out one with dip switches if I have to. That's always a last resort because uh, we're just testing here. We don't have to go too crazy. But let's let's see. And for who knows, I might be completely wrong, and this thing never had working video after I recapped it. I'm just making a fool out of myself, but. Hey, all right. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll see. Uh, I'll see if I can find one. Let's see if this works first. Oh, I have to plug the darn thing in, of course. Oopsie doodle. The dip switches control the uh, the circuitry with that little adapter, so you could set it to force it to be a resolution or something like that. Or uh, if the monitor had a sync on green or a sync on different signal or something like that, it made it more universal with different VGA monitors. All right, so we do get a green light on the monitor. Eh? There we go. Yep, so uh, didn't like this particular adapter, but that other adapter worked fine. Uh, it is a little confused. It can't seem to find uh, the SCSI 2SD device, although it is flashing the heck out of itself. Um, but um, we can try 
another SCSI 2SD adapter because I do happen to have two of them here. Um, I might have swapped the, OS, the SD cards around. Uh, the SD card on the version 6 needs some data on it to actually set the termination and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, looking at the memory here, I think we have a full 8 megabytes of memory on board, which is much better than I do have on the, uh, the uh, Macintosh uh, 2. So Bruce is saying, unplug the SD card and plug it in again. All right, let's try that. I saw him do that in one of his videos. Let's see if that resolves the problem. Uh, it's still flashing the question mark there. Yeah, we can try the hard disk in a second. I'm, I just know that uh, I had one of these set up. Um, I might have just swapped the SD cards. Uh, like I said, I had to label them. No excuse, I have a label printer right there. This is actually only a little 32 megabyte card, but came for free with the camera. But Yeah, it's worth trying. Um, I'm going to turn this off. If I could... <laughs> so the power button on the back does not do anything. That could be a problem. Uh, this termination is set uh, via software, yes. So let's take out this little 512 card. Let's put it this 8 gig card, because I believe that's what the card that was in here before. Uh, if not, we'll just try the other adapter. It took a few times that time. Or the keyboard contacts may be a little eh. There we go. Welcome to Macintosh. Perfect. Now I need a mouse. How about that? Not supposed to do this, but I'm going to be dangerous and hot plug the mouse in. Yeah, SCSI 2 SD adapters are, are pretty good. If uh, you're starting out with one, I definitely suggest this one. Uh, they go for around $65, $70. This is a, a version 5.1. Uh, I have optionally soldered on a DB25 connector for the SCSI port here, so I could use this externally, like on a laptop with an adapter or something like that, um, or using the internal pins here. And actually, I have some dust on that pin from probably using a very, very, very old uh, SCSI cable on here. Hope that's not uh, corrosive. Whatever that is. Oh, we'll clean it off later. We're not going to use that right now. Okay, so yes. Get to the chopper. Yes. Alright, so let's just take a look here real quick. Uh, I just want to confirm how much memory is on this thing. I believe it's 8 megs, because that's what we wrote down. And uh, about this Macintosh. How about that? It's Macintosh 2CI. And if we want to get the camera closer here, we see we have 8 megabytes of memory. How about that? Um, we should actually be able to do color on this. So let's go to uh, monitors. Colors. 256. Beautiful. And I believe it's just stuck at, uh, well, it's, uh, go to options here. Yeah, so we have our uh, Macintosh 2 built-in video uh, memory allocation, which is pretty cool. So you can set the maximum of colors uh, to reserve the memory for using uh, a color display. So since this does not use a video card that's dedicated, it will actually take your system memory for video, a lot like the Intel graphics of much later machines does. So yeah, we have a very nice uh, System 7.1 installed here on our Macintosh 2 CI. And uh, I think the only problem is this uh, machine does not like uh, Nubus cards. So uh, we're going to shut this down. And we're going to unplug the Macintosh because we cannot switch it off. And that, I'm sure, is a problem of maybe some of the capacitors right by that power switch eating into the traces. Uh, of course, this is not the machine we're really focusing on today, although um, we'll see what happens if we hit a dead end with the 2CX, maybe we'll, we'll play with the 2CI some more uh, because they are very, very similar. And Bruce has a guide for the 2CI. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, move this massive keyboard off my desk and just move the camera back for a second. Uh, we're going to put the power supply in the 2CX case here, and uh, that will allow us to see what happens uh, with the with the 2CX. And then we could uh, all get to criticizing my poor soldering skills from a few years ago. But that's not really fair, is it? Yes, it is. Of course it is. All right, so let's... Um, you know, I'm going to take the power supply off of out of uh, this machine first. So let's do that. Let's unplug all the cables from the back. Again, this is a pretty easy machine to get a get your hands in. Um, I'm actually going to... Let's see. Uh, if we want to... Let me just see how uh, the above camera works here. Uh, that is not exactly pointed where I want. Um, maybe? Kind of? Uh, my above camera is on like a little... A uh, dinky tripod thing that kind of like does what I want it to do, but kind of doesn't. So um, it's not exactly fancy or professional or anything. Um, but let's uh, let's uh, get that to steady there. Uh, you could you could run a pretty high resolution depending on the video card. I've never tried to max one out, but all right. So let's uh, move to the above shot here where we could sort of see this Macintosh a little better. So, um, yeah, let's get our SCSI 2SD adapter out of the way here. <clears throat> all right, whoop, sorry about that. I hit the microphone and probably made all your ears bleed. Let's take our SCSI cable out. I remember going to a PC show years ago, and there were plenty of these SCSI cables, and nobody wanted them. <laughs> and they were in the trash. So I took most of them, whatever I could handle. And that's why I got a lot of SCSI cables. You never need, you, you always need more though, so. All right, so taking this power supply out, if I recall correctly, is not too bad. Um, what we have to basically do is two things. This plastic thing is clipped to the power supply. So uh, you have to sort of stand up for this. Uh, you have to kind of um, reach your hand in here and just pull this tab back a little bit. Uh, usually there's actually a screw here in this in this chamber. Uh, but mine has since been removed. And you can sort of just rest your hand, put your hand under the power supply and just sort of lift it up. It's gonna get caught on the plastic here, but that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna release it. So it's it's up about a centimeter, maybe a quarter of an inch here. Now we pull back on this plastic, and that will that because that this piece of plastic has like a clip that goes into the power supply uh, to kind of keep things stationary here. So I'm just pulling back on this gently just to get that clip out of the metal housing of the power supply there, and we're doing an okay job. It's always always. When you do this stuff live, it doesn't cooperate as much as you'd like, but yeah, see, it's sort of taken the the plastic uh, caddy out with it, so just using a little screwdriver-like tool to, uh, there we go, just pry that down, and this comes right out. So here's the power supply, so we can put that to the side, uh, and once that power supply is out, this whole cage just comes out very, very easily, so there we go. So you can see, here's the board. Don't look too closely, you'll see my terrible recapping job. I don't think it's too bad, but I used um, you know, the barrel capacitors, because that's all I had at the time. So, okay, let me uh, just catch up on the chat here. Bleed for Apple, Steve. No, thank you. I would not like to. 1600 by 1200, yeah, that's... Pretty crazy back in the the early uh, late eighties, early nineties. Okay, so um, we took the power supply out so we could test it in our Macintosh Two CX. So I'm going to take the Two CI and I'm going to put it under our desk here. We won't forget about it. Um, and let's switch to the Two CX that we have here. So I'm going to I'm going to switch cameras real quick. 
There we go. And uh, so I'm going to show you. Uh, these are the caps that I put in here. I'm not. You know, this is my first recapping job. I really did not know a lot of what I was doing. I'm just going to try and hold the camera still here for a second. Uh, so we have these barrel capacitors uh, here. Uh, I bent the legs in a weird way so they would fit through the holes and blah blah blah. Um, I used some flux. Uh, it really, it, it's not the best, um, but this is definitely something that uh, I want to redo. Um, it's not the neatest job. Um, I've replaced all the capacitors, even the ones by the Nubus card slots, the bigger ones, that uh, the axial ones. Um, yeah, so, uh, but we will see. Um, what this machine does when we try and power it on. Don't laugh! It was my first time soldering with this that particular year. <laughs> Alright, so um, I'm going to plug our speaker in and um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing some issues here. So anyway, that's, uh, uh, yeah, as you can see the power supply. So here's the power supply. It's a big, big... Uh, almost like a square guy. Um, I have two and they're both different brands. This is an As Aztec, I think. Aztec. Um, you have a big dusty fan that we got to clean out one of these days, but uh, we're just going to test it. We're not worrying about that too much. Uh, you can see right through it. You can see a ton of capacitors uh, and goodies inside of there. Uh, I don't see the two huge capacitors right from the side you could kind of see in there. Uh, I don't see them bulging or anything, but it probably would not be a bad idea to um to uh replace those and i see what well, looks like one of the, a very little filter that was one of the ones that bruce was replacing in his macintosh plus i'm not saying it's the same one it looks similar to that that it's whole shape and stuff i wouldn't be surprised if that's like one of those little tiny capacitor filter thingy whatever um yeah and here's a connector on the bottom uh, so not your standard connector there but uh yeah so this just plugs in right here and a uh, very poor placement of this capacitor because uh, it's a barrel one that's standing up and of course the power supply uh, sort of rests right on top of it there. So, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so to prove that this machine works, uh, we're just going to turn it on without, and, well, to prove it powers on. <laughs> From what I recall, it powers on. We'll see if it actually does. Um, yeah, so we're going to plug in. All we have is a power supply plugged in, the speaker. We don't have any discs or anything like that. Um, there was an LED, yes, there is an LED for the power, so we'll see if that works, and, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what happens when we try and turn this thing on. Well, we have no memory in it, so of course it's going to yell at us. Silly me. Uh, I forget if this needs all of the banks filled, or just two of them. Um... I really can't recall. Uh. Let's try where I'm plugged here. Let's just try with two and just see if it if it gets happy or angry at us. Uh, I would not be surprised if we have to fill every single slot. Now these have the, the plastic um, holders where uh, the 2CI has the metal clips which are, in my opinion, much easier to work with and much less of a risk of breaking something. Ah uh, yes, the good old death chimes. That's when you knew your Mac was screwed up easily. Hello, Demir. <laughs> Glad to have you with us. Uh, let's try this again. It might still yell at us. Yep, it doesn't like that. Alright, so let's put all the memory in. I do have other memory. Um... I was playing around with it uh, on the MacAc episode or something. I, I think I showed it to the camera, but uh, I don't recall where I, that is right now. It's probably in this mess over here, but 
Uh, I just have this uh, 2CI on my lap and I'm borrowing its memory modules here. As, uh, as best I can, I should actually just... Oh. Oh, never mind. I thought I I saw something disgusting. I thought I saw green, but that's just the color of the circuit board at the bottom there. See, Bruce is coming. I'm sorry. Only one bank needs four to be filled, but it must be bank A. Thank you very much, Bruce. After I took all of them out of there, but that's okay. <laughs> it's my own fault. All right, so um, we have four identical dims. Um... We have bank B, of course, is the ones I put them in, so I'll carefully, carefully bend these little plastic clips very carefully. There we go. And uh, put these in bank A. Okay. Sorry, we're like 47 minutes here and I haven't recapped the darn thing yet, but just for my own sanity, I want to see what happens before and after here so we don't get any guesses of, wait, what did it do before? What happened? All right, so let's plug this in again. So we got no startup chime. That ain't good. <laughs> it's not my father, I swear. So we don't have a startup chime, but we have a green LED on the front. Uh, all of bank A is filled. I'm going to just make sure that these are, are completely in here. And they are all one megabyte, so that should not be a, a problem or anything like that. I'm just pushing the power button on the back here. So the fan's running. Um, very curious. Very curious. If I press the interrupt or reset buttons, I don't get any uh, anything either. So that's a little suspicious. Yes, on the Macintosh 2, you have to jump start it because if the battery's dead on the Macintosh 2, it has two PRAM batteries, uh, you have to jump start it. So what I actually did is I took um, AA battery holders, two of them, wrapped uh, one positive and negative around each battery terminal for the two batteries, uh, and that worked. If you see my recapping video on the Macintosh 2, I do go into that a little bit. Yeah, so this machine, um, uh, let's plug in the new bus card just for the heck of it. I doubt it's going to display in the video because I don't think it did before, and that was the biggest problem with this. Uh, but if it's not chiming, that's also a problem. So, okay. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Yeah, so the monitor is still acting like nothing is connected. Um, I know this new bus card slot, this new bus card works because it was in our Macintosh 2 before. Um, but yeah, it could be a, a number of things. What's interesting is it will make the death chimes, um, but it won't make the uh, it won't make the uh, happy chime. So something is not right here. Uh, what I will try and do uh, before we just take the board out and, and desolder all the caps on here. I'm just gonna take out. Um, there's, you know, there's two different brands of memory uh, modules in here. It should not make a difference, but who knows? So I'm just gonna put in all of the same make and model here. It's the exact same speed and everything. Make sure this is all 
getting so this this is the memory I'm using Cal Calabaku the heck is that <laughs> C-A-L-A-B-C-O yeah anyway let's plug this in it's always hard to get these memory modules in because they have to like lean back and when they lean back they hit right into the other memory module so yeah what you have to do is pretty much what I'm going to about to do here is just you know, take out the other modules here and just put them in the the order I have to. So okay, so let's plug this in again and uh, turn it on. Oh, uh, it would help if the speaker was plugged into the board, wouldn't it? Wow. Yeah, alright, I'm an idiot. So, yeah, it does chime. I'm just a stupid idiot, and I forgot that uh, the little speaker port is right there. And when I was unplugging the memory, I took that out. So, yeah. So, we have uh, our memory in there. It does chime, so it is happy, um, but we are not getting any video on it. So, uh, just to prove that point again, uh, we're going to plug in a Nubus card slot. Uh, plug in a Nubus video card into the Nubus card slot. Doesn't matter which slot. Uh, we're going to plug our video adapter into that card. And we're going to plug our, our VGA cable into that video adapter. Which sometimes uh, has to actually go through the little... I hate this. Some of these adapters make you screw in the little uh, little support things here. There we go. And we'll just turn this on. Yeah, so it does chime. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any video on the screen, unfortunately. Uh, that was a problem we encountered before. Yeah, so it doesn't. It wouldn't surprise me if there's there's something wrong with one of the capacitors here. So I'm going to take the board out, and we're going to just take a look at that. And we'll go from there. Uh, it, it does, it does, it should, uh, <laughs> Floppy just start shooting for the diskette drive. <laughs> yeah, um, this, uh, oh, there we go. This, uh, machine, uh, I did in, in, uh, at least in the video that I, I did, um, a few years ago, I did plug in a floppy disk drive and it, it seemed like it wanted to boot, but, uh, you can't really do much without video. Uh, so we want to make sure that we resolve this problem. And one of the reasons I want to get this all fixed up is, yes, this was my family's first computer. Um, what I think would be really fun, uh, even though the Mac 2 SI is so similar to it, um, is to have this working um, and to have my dad play around with it. Because it was his first computer and it would be sort of fun to get his reaction uh, just to, to see what's going on and how things have changed and stuff like that. Hello, Dana. Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> Mactergeist, the terror of the 2CX. Okay. All right, so we're just going to take this power supply out, which is much, much easier um, now that um, there's no plastic caddy there. So we just shake it back and forth and lift it out of its guides here. There we go. All right. Now, taking this board out is super, super simple. Uh, remember not to put a disc in the front slot when the computer is like this. <laughs> what do you mean, Bruce? I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to read floppies fine. You just... Oh. <laughs> Clunk. Exactly, Dana. So, uh, what's nice about this machine is all you have to do is take out this speaker, and the board uh, just easily comes out. So, uh, there's a little clasp on here. You just lift this speaker up, take that cable out. Uh, if you do have the memory, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, restart and interrupt switches here, you want to lift that out, and then you just slide the board down. And it comes out very easily. And, uh, yeah, so this, this board uh, actually has some cool signatures. Uh, this board, this case, actually has some cool signatures on it. So we will... Move this over here for a second. I'll show you those signatures. Uh, 
Uh, you didn't miss too much. We were just playing around with uh, the, the 2CI and 2CX showing uh, that they do need some recapping. And we're about to get down to the, 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 the business, as it were, in a second. So here are some of the signatures here. Um, we have Gavin. Uh, we have uh, Jerry. We have Tom. Uh, no Steve Jobs on this one. Uh, but this is the product design team. It's actually labeled up top. Uh, this camera's probably not doing a good job of it at all, but it says product design team. And here's where the signatures are on this side. So not as uh, classic or historic as the Compact Max uh, would have the signatures on, but uh, pretty cool nonetheless. All right, so that is the case. <laughs> exactly, Dana. Exactly. Okay, so I'm running out of space here because of all these cases. I'm, I'm just putting, let me put them under the desk here, actually. And these cases are very light once there's nothing in them. Yes, he was. That's why people sometimes mistake Steve Capp's signature for Steve Jobs. Uh, I don't think Steve Capp signed this one either, but it's, it's funny seeing a signature and you're like, yeah, that's actually Steve Capp's. That's not Steve Jobs. There are were, there were multiple Steves. Okay. Man found deceased in basement. Cause of death. Macintosh 2CX gone rogue. Lashes from floppies and a bash from a large power supply. Reporting more at 5 p.m. <laughs> All right. So um, let's get some of this other stuff out of the way that we won't be needing right now. Uh, we have our new bus card here. Oh, we can put that back over here. We're clearing the stage for our soldering kit here. And uh, this hard disk uh, we'll put over here. And here's our board. And here's our memory, which does work. We don't want to lose that. So we'll put it over here. Uh, so Demir says he recently got a Macintosh SE FDHD and was surprised to find the signatures inside. I have an SE with a cage fan, so presumably much older without signatures. Interesting. So was it just a random which uh, compacts had them, which didn't? I always thought it was something on early cases. I think they were for all of the runs of the entire cases of those machines, I believe. I, 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 my memory may not be exact on that. Um, but the joke is that like people think it's so rare, uh, but it was basically in the molded plastic. And I'm assuming it would, would have been more expensive for them to run another design run of that case without um, <laughs> those signatures inside. So... No, we're only one hour in, bud. We're only one hour in. One. All right, so let's move this massive keyboard out of the way. And let's get our recaps, uh, our uh, solder and heat station on here. <laughs> Jay's always surprised and never surprised at the same time. That's, that's how Jay rolls. What is left of the poor Motorola. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Let's move the, the tissue so it doesn't spontaneously combust. Okay, let me get my tools here. Okay, so here's the block of wood I'm using so I don't destroy this desk entirely. And we have some junk I gotta clean off of that in a second. For our solder station, I just have to plug in. Welcome back, Matt. Okay, we'll be moving that in a second. I just gotta get everything on the table. Okay, and um, still missing a few things. We'll, we'll get everything sorted. Let me move the microphone over here so we don't hit it with anything. Give ourselves as much room as possible hot air station here. Uh, 
your, your, your premonition would be correct on that, Bruce, unfortunately. Every time... I, I, it's not my fault. The one I did order, they did cancel. I just was too lazy to bother ordering it again. But, uh, and I'm surprised because usually Amazon won't uh, cancel something. They'll just uh, like say, oh, it's you know, shipping out later or whatever. But I got to notice that they, uh, they went ahead and just canceled on me. So uh, I will have to order, order it and uh, get some respectable flux. Apparently it does. <laughs> Apparently it does. Okay, and uh, I have a little box of uh, stuff here I have to get. It's been a while since I recapped, so my stuff is kind of um, all around here. <laughs> I could go get normal Q-tips. I uh, actually may have run out of them, but um, we'll see how this goes. So here's most of the capacitors that I have here. Um, I ordered additional capacitors just for this project. Hold on, let me go grab those. I believe here are some of the uh, axial capacitors I needed. So this is what we'll have. Be prepared. Yes, I did have, uh, I did order the axials. And these are, I believe the right ones. These are 470 UF, 16 volts. And that is exactly what these are here. So these are proper capacitors. Uh, the ones I should have ordered in the first place. So that's that. Um, let me make sure I get the rest of my goodies on the table. Hold on. We're almost ready to go. solder ready. Uh, I need to find the, the flux that is not admired by many. Um, problem is things like fall between these cracks of all this crap I have in my desk. Let me just see if it's in one of these little bins here. Just hold on a moment. <laughs> yes, I do have the other kind too. That's what I'm looking for, Bruce. I think it's with I have these little boxes that I keep things in. I just have to make sure where my boxes are because it should all be in the same place, but in reality, that never happens. have our solder wick. Sort of like a puzzle. A very, very disorganized puzzle. That's my fault. But. Hey, 
Yeah, terribly sorry about this. Just give me a minute, guys. I'm just trying to find uh, the last piece of the puzzle here. Right, some more capacitors. This is why you should always stay organized, folks. Unlike me. So let's give you a different view for one second. Ah. There we go. So, we almost have everything here. We have, uh, and Bruce just put in the list, how about that? So, uh, we need 947 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. These are the 10 microfarad. These are the 47 volt, so we have those. Um, let's see, and we need two of the 10 microfarad. So that's not these ones. That's not those. That's a, that's a 16 volts, 10 microfarad. That's these. And then we need three of the 470. That's these. And I have the others. I'm just looking for, I had a little bin and of course it like knocked over. And all the parts should be right here, and they're not, so yay. Um, I found my rotten flux, at least. So we're almost there. Check my little bin here, where I keep all of my fallen batteries. Yes, I need to, I need to put Bruce's eye up on uh, on one of my monitors here. Oh, where did those silly capacitors go? It's gonna drive me nuts. They just saw the darn things, and I'm like, hey, these are important. I should put them where the others are, huh? Um. Wow. This is terribly not exciting. Sorry, guys. This is exactly what happens when you clean up your desk. Everything gets moved around. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll get, a, I guess, a start and uh, 
<sighs> Sorry about that. I really need to be more organized. I really do. I really do. Because I took everything off my desk. I was cleaning up. And so my desk was fairly cleaned. And uh, I lost some of the capacitors that I ordered. And yeah, that's, uh, that's frustrating. But all right, well, we'll get started. And when we get to that, um, we'll get to that. Let's see. Um, we have 47. Yeah, so the, the, one I, the one I don't have are uh, the two that go here. So, um, yes, you would be busy for days and days and days, uh, which is so that's something you like doing. Stop on by. <laughs> I'll put you to work. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's just make a little list here because uh, Bruce does not have a list for this particular model yet. Um, just clean off the gunk that we have here. I have a new pair of uh, tweezers that are not total crap. So we're going to be using those. Speaking of total crap, look at the old soldering tip. Look at that. And this is what a normal one looks like. Yeah, um, this one wore down pretty easily. Um, will not be recommending that particular brand. Okay, so um, I'm just going to tip this so all of these bad capacitors fall in my lap, and then I'm going to toss them out because there's a bunch of junk. Okay, all right, so this is a bunch of old junky capacitors from some Macintosh LC2s and such. So let's throw those out. All right, this this one I'm keeping. This was uh, this was an interesting one. Uh, do I have my microscope plugged in? I should. Let me make sure I can reach it. Because we, uh, we will be needing it for this one. Let's see if it's uh, plugged in. Yes, it is. Uh, this capacitor has a crack in it. Uh, this was an interesting one because uh, I was doing a Macintosh LC2. This capacitor was cracked, and I was like, what? So is this cable seriously not long enough, or is it just caught on something? It is caught on something. Brilliant. Brilliant. Ugh. Let's, uh... oh, what happened now? Unplug the. Yeah, it's uh, wrapped around a bundle of Ethernet cords, so we'll undo that and plug it in there. There we go. Okay, let's just switch to that um, camera real quick. Oh, I have to re find it on the list here because it. It got a little confused. Okay, so let's uh, let's swap over to that. Um, yeah, let's make sure that's visible here. Okay, so um, what well, I just wanted to show you, as everything falls off of the Mac Mini, that's why I usually don't put cables directly on top of it. But uh, well, um, so. Not the best microscope at all, but uh, look at that. That has a crack right through it. Now, it wasn't burned like that when I got to it. I was desoldering it, and it got a little, a little crispy there. But that mark, that curve, is actually a crack. So, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> this is the one uh, a while back, if you remember, uh, Bruce was trying to help us uh, find out the value of that capacitor. And what I ended up doing is just stealing uh, a capacitor from another Macintosh LC2 that was dead. Uh, and we've replaced it. But uh, that still didn't want that machine to work. So, yes, this is a very unhappy cap. Uh, I blame this capacitor for all of our troubles. So uh, we are going to... This is, this is a pair of tweezers that just shows you how tiny this little thing is. And we're going to put that in our Capacitor Hall of Fame uh, in, this, in this little drawer we have on the side. <laughs> How about that? Okay, so um, let's just adjust this here. Just because, I'm sorry, my screen is very tiny. So I just 
need to uh, uh, adjust this camera here because you need to see everything on the right there. There we go. Okay, so um, yeah, let's uh, let's go back to this and let's get situated here because we're gonna we're gonna start by uh, because there's no guide for this. I just want to be extra careful of which capacitors that we have on here already. Um, so I'm just gonna draw a very very crude diagram. So we're just gonna draw a rectangle here. And cut out for the thing there. Uh, these are memory banks, uh, and these are the new bus slots, and here's the power supply connector. Very, very basic, very crude drawing, just to give us an idea of where things are. So, um, I'm just going to put a little circle where the caps are, and make sure we don't miss anything. So here's the SCSI port, there's a cap there. Uh, there are three over here. And there's one over here. There are six in a row Oh, by the battery. That's going to be fun. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, and there are two next to the power supply port there. So let's make sure we count them all up correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15. Does that sound correct? 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, I got myself crazy again. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 capacitors in total. There should be 15 capacitors. Does that sound right? Uh, I could just take a picture of the board, but I want to write this down, and I want to just keep referring back to my phone, which is usually over there. Um, so, yeah. So these are... Uh, these are all 47, 16, 16 volt. Uh, this little one is the same. And uh, this also, if I come back to this tomorrow or whatever, let's say we don't finish or whatever, how unlikely would that be? Um, I have everything just written down already. So uh, these are the ones that we, uh, oh, this one of them is a 470 UF. 16 and this one is the the 220 25 volt and uh, all of these should be the same uh, yes no actually two of them are the 10 10 uf 25 10 uf 25 volts let me just get a little closer here to make sure And the rest of those are 4716. Okay. Okay, and this one here is uh, 4716. Okay. In this, in the row of six there, there's 447 and two. I actually. Uh, yeah, so the two UF ones, uh, the microfiber ones, those are 25 volts. Is that correct, Bruce? That's what I have here, although I could have made a mistake when I was putting them on a while back. But, yeah, so I have uh, 447 microfarad 16 volt, and I have two 10 microfarad 25 volt. That's what I have. So I'm just double-checking everything here. So for uh, 11, yep, so that's 15 in total. Cool. All right, so we have our diagram here. Macintosh 2CX. Uh, today is February the 12th, 2020. There we go. Says UF. Yeah, I, I am weird. I say things both ways sometimes. All right, so uh, let's just get this board over here. Oh, I do have a little fan I, I got. Um... To blow away all the hazardous smoke from me breathing in. Please allow me a second to run upstairs and get it. So. Oh, interesting. All the caps I'm replacing are 16 volts. So those were 25. I'm going to replace those two first. I mean, I, I know you say, Bruce, that the, you could go up on the voltage, but 
maybe that was my problem. Well, we shall see. Let me uh, just run upstairs real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, uh, what I come back to? <laughs> All right, so here's just a little fan. Uh, my wife ordered a fan for her, her desk at the office, at her office, and she didn't realize it was a two-pack, so free fan, woo! All right, so it's USB powered, and I'm sure this will blow directly into our microphone. <laughs> I say it's USB powered, um, oh, the uh, computer it's connected to should be on. Oh, the monitor's not on, and the monitor has the USB port built into it. There we go. Woo! Of course, you can't see, but well, now you can. Well, kind of. Yeah, so good. It, it, <laughs> it's a fan. It blows. That's good. All right, so... Put that over here and uh, let's just oh that's right I did uh I did have these little soldering tips that I put in uh, my drawer here so if, if all else fails I could uh, also attempt to use those but I think the ones I have right now are okay all right so um, let's get ourselves situated here and get started so make sure that our our hot air station is over here. Uh, that is turned on. Um, as I said just before I ran upstairs for a second, I am curious if um, the reason this doesn't turn on is um, that these two capacitors are 25 volt. Now, they are smaller. I, I will show you on the 2CX. Again, this is the 2CX verse uh, and everyone. Um, that these two capacitors are smaller. Oh, come on, you silly camera. Uh, these are, oh my goodness, I'm not, not happy today, huh, camera? Let's focus, shall we? Let me open up, by the time I open up this manual camera focus control panel thingy, um, it, uh, it usually wants to work, but let's, uh, there we go. So you can see the two capacitors on the left there are actually smaller. You can see C15 and C16. The footprint is smaller too. Now that's what leads me to believe these are a little different. Um, Bruce, if you want to Google something real quick just to see. Um, I, if they're supposed to be 16 volt, that's perfect. But um, I'm just a little curious because I don't think I would have erroneously replaced them um, with the wrong one. But who knows? Maybe I would have. This is me after all we're talking about. Um, so yeah, oh, let's uh, put this back on our tripod here. Okay. So um, anyway, let's get that there. We have our our snips for our solder braid. Um, they're definitely meant to be 16 volt. Okay, and <laughs> and they are uh, 47 microfarad. Is that correct, Bruce? On the 2CX? Or is oh, let me just scroll up because you just said it there. 
Oh, two, two microfarad, uh, 10 microfarad. Okay, so 10 microfarad. Uh, let me write this down. Uh, where'd that pen go? I was just using There we go. So these are supposed to be 10 microfarad, and they're supposed to be 16 volt. Now, again, 10 microfarad, 16 volt. Again, I remember you saying in a video, Bruce, that it shouldn't really make a difference, but just for argument's sake, we're going to do those first. Just, who knows? I don't know. I know exactly where these are. These solder joints are not looking the best at all. Um, probably didn't use enough flux first time around. Ooh, and I'm seeing... What is this? Hold on. Let's uh, let's get the little microscope in here. Ooh, oh, that's a problem with having computer mice and everything everywhere. Um, let's see what the heck this is under here. So that's a chip there. We don't want that. We want... Look at this. This is under this, uh, this thing, this, uh, ugh, something goopy under there. Let's, uh, see what the heck that is. <laughs> I would hope not, Jay. I mean, I get excited about old computers, but not that excited. Uh, I mean... I don't know if I, I'm comfortable with lifting this entire thing up. I mean, it, it is flexible. Heat sink goo. Ah. Okay, so... Maybe that has moved around at some point. I guess that was flush at one point. So, thermal paste. Okay, well, that makes me feel better that I didn't, like, goop the heck out of this thing for at some point for no reason. Um, cool. Alright, so, let's put that... Side here, and uh, okay. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, like I said before, uh, I'm just going to. What did he do to that poor 2CX? Hey, this is a long time ago. I'm trying to fix it now. I was doing my homework. Um, so, what I'm gonna do here is take off those two caps here. Um, I'll just try those two first. Let's just just for the heck of it here. So. Uh, this is going to be interesting. I have not done this in a while. Uh, I need to... Um, what was I... Oh, where's my... That's why I'm missing the... Uh, I got a new one of those um, little copper thingies that uh, clean the soldering iron, which are very, very important. Um, and I found it while I was cleaning up. And uh, here it is. Here we are. Ah! Let's take a nice brand new copper thing and put it only the finest of quality I'm sure this is probably not the best but uh, no yeah this little thingy that's what I meant okay so let's okay get our disgusting flux that we should stop using and let's take our little tweezers out from Micro Center here. Oh, these are much better. These these are night and day. These these are this is just a bent piece of metal. This actually is like has a spring to it. These are these on the left are just garbage. These are these are great. So I'm gonna be using these from now on. Okay, so um, I guess we'll start by uh, removing uh, these two uh, these two capacitors here. So let's let's do that. Um, uh, the wick is over here. I got the soldering wick. Don't worry. Uh, this is our our super wick number four twenty seven fine braid. Okay, and then we got our our one pound of uh, solder there. All right, so let's turn on the soldering iron. Set it to, uh, what is that, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Why do I have this mouse pad here? That's just begging to get destroyed. Move that over. All right, so we are we are underway here. <laughs> now we're 30 minutes in. But I hope you all are enjoying yourselves. 
Uh, yes, um, I have some tin foil here, and oh, where'd this stupid? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I have uh, my little PCI card slots, and uh, there we go. See, I just moved everything all over the place when I was moving things around here, but we're all good here. And, uh, yeah, that should be good enough for now. And I'll always grab more if I need more. Okay, so, um, let's move this a little bit so I can read your comments better. Black container is alcohol. Oh, the alcohol. Oh, shoot. Hold on. All right, here we go. Dollar store bins. I have dollar store bins. They're all filled up with other crap. <laughs> when you have over 150 computers and their accessories, you fill up stuff real quick. So, all right. Uh, I do need a bin just for my soldering stuff because I have like these little things and then they get full and I use other ones. So, yes, I will be doing that. So, let's take those out. Let's put some of this in here. Just a little bit. And we'll put our toothbrush here so we can clean things away. Now, what I'm about to do is what I'm about to do. This is not exactly a recommended method or blah, 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 blah. Do not follow what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, you're at your own risk. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so... Um, Let's, uh, where's the other one of these? Uh, oh boy, this is turning out great tonight, guys. This is really, really something. I thought I had the other one here. We'll use a, we use a Mac Pro one if we have to, but there's not too much plastic around here. It's just this little piece here, so just getting everything ready. All right, so let's uh, see if our soldering iron is hot. Let's uh, clean off some of that gunk there. Oh, that's nice and shiny. Nice and shiny. All right, good, good, good. good. So let's, uh, I'm going to try and blow the fan so um, it's... Uh, just enough to get this and it's not in the microphone. If uh, you hear the fan blowing, I apologize, but that's uh, it's for my health. I don't want to breathe in this stuff directly. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so let's um, put some flux around here. The yucky flux that we want to get rid of. So I could just apply it liberally because I don't care. I want to get rid of this nasty, nasty flux. Okay. All right. And um, let's uh, turn the heat gun on also. And uh, we're going to remove the capacitors we put on here a little while ago. So goodbye, capacitors. Actually, these ones, there we go. These ones I may get away with just using the soldering iron. Uh, I'm not sure if the heat gun is actually the, uh, no, Matt, uh, the best method for this because the legs are very visible there. So let, let me, yeah, let me just try and the soldering iron, I'll have better luck. I just don't want to, like, 
uh, stress anything out on the board here. That doesn't need all that heat there. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's what happens when you don't do something for a while, you make mistakes. Okay, let's try this again. So, uh, these did not go, th these are, these are through cap capacitors, but I did not, um, I did not, um, geez, Steven, speak correctly. I did not put them through the board because they're, 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 I use them as surface mount, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I don't need that there anymore. It's very stupid of me because I could easily lift the pads on these capacitors. What the hell I was thinking when I was putting them on. Right, well, hopefully I didn't destroy anything there. This one is easier because it's upright. Let's, uh... Then you would heat gun it. Okay. Overheard shot? Huh? Oh, overhead camera. Unfortunately, that camera is very high up. I don't think you're going to get any detail. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see if we if we move to that, we're we're very far away. So uh, let me just get these two off here, um, and then we could play around with the microscope. I don't have that fancy of a setup here. Oh, and I just noticed there's some corrosion on these chips here. I mean, that could easily be... There's a... Oh, wow. There's a... Yeah. Okay. We're, we're going uh, to... I think that pad lifted up a bit. Awesome. Um, we're going to take my glasses off because I don't need them to be this close. And we're going to use our friend Mr. Heat Gun here. Um, yeah. Because I should have done that a while ago. Let that heat up. Okay, that was successful. Now I have to put my glasses on to read the screen. How about that? Uh, what does flux do? Um, it does a lot of things. You should really use it. And I'm going to cop out and just recommend Jay and Bruce tell you. But uh, basically I think it helps uh, clean the area. And it also helps uh, uh, make sure that the, the old solder kind of helps get off of the board. I think. Maybe. Maybe. So we put some flux on there. Uh, I'm going to use the solder. We can get some of the uh, oxidation. That's the thing I keep forgetting. Let's uh, get that old solder off of those pads. I don't think I did use a wick when I did this last time because I was not educated. I was dumb. 
So let's. Uh, Yeah, one of the pads definitely moved a little bit, but um, we can try repairing that a little bit. Uh, okay, um, yeah, let me take all these caps off because, I don't know, I, I have a, this is, this, is, this is very stupid of me to put these here because uh, I don't think these are going to be easy to take off. Um, but, I mean, I want to do this right, so, let's get this little heat guy over here. Guess who forgot the flux? Uh, I am sorry. I am like a few few weeks or whatever of not recapping and you... It all goes to crap. Well... <laughs> it's uh sometimes it doesn't make the one you want to come off come off but it'll make the one right next to it come off okay that made very quick work of that You know that one's not socketed to the board. How are you going to install an accelerator? Oh, you mean the the processor? I don't know. You're referring to the, the CPU? Uh, this is, I believe, soldered to the board. Yes. Right there. I believe that's soldered right to the board. So I don't think I'm going to install an accelerator on this. We'll we'll leave it original for now. Uh, I don't even think I have an accelerator that would fit on that. All right, so let's get the microscope in here now that we could we could do some things here. And we're going to All right, so here's oh, Here's the uh, capacitors that we removed for uh, C10, C11, uh, these here. Ah, no, you, you weren't necessarily needed, Bruce. Uh, one of the traces looked a little dodgy on here, and in fact, I'll show you because you're here. Uh, is the first one we pulled off, uh, the, the trace sort of moved there. Let me, uh, yeah, you can see that. It's, uh, it got a little, uh, oh, come on. There we go. It uh, decided to move a little bit. So, oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I have to click the uh, transition button. Let me turn out of studio mode. There we go. That's much better. Um, there. So you can see that with the reflection here. It sucks. I'm sorry. Um, why is it reflecting? Like, oh, let me turn this light off. Maybe that'll help. Maybe. Hold on. I need to get a better light thing, uh, scope, but I cannot afford it right now so I'm sorry we're using the, the thrift store scope camera which pales in comparison to anything that Jane Bruce let me turn this around because I'm holding it like upside down and I'm pointing it the wrong way and there we go nice sharp image and now let's move what we want to see there we go there's the problematic feet the foot rather on the left and oh they it looks much worse 
Uh, I'm holding this so it's blurry, but it's welding around. <laughs> Run Catalina on it. Yeah, sure. All right, so um, I'm going to place this just uh, down here. Uh, we will likely need to uh, fix that trace because as uh, uh, that pad, rather. I'm sorry, I keep mixing my words up today. I am just a mess. These look very dirty. Uh, I do not think I did anything uh, to help these pads uh, last time I was here. So we're going to give this Macintosh some tender love and care. I had no idea what the hell I was doing last time. I have a little bit better of an idea of what the heck I should be doing this time. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get to it then. So, what I'm going to do is get all the bad solder off of this board here. Um, and hopefully, um, we uh, well, there's still a good amount of flux on the board here, but this is the crummy flux, so I do not care if we use more of it. So, uh, plus the, uh, the wick has a little bit of flux on it, so it's not bad. Alright, so, let's get our, our wick here. I'm just adding a tab of new solder to this, just, uh, loosening that up here. And then we're gonna just suck that right up. as best we can when let me clean this there we go right, that looks a little better and we'll do the same for the pads right behind it again I should be Cleaning this more. Oh, let me move this little copper thing because it's right near the wire of the uh, of the microscope. I don't want to burn right through that cable. That would be bad. Okay. That's right, this is, uh, there we go. Forgot I'm using a slightly different tip on this solder iron than I usually do because I very much destroyed the other tip. Okay, we're going to have to continue to clean that up a little bit. Because this is not as, as nice and shiny as it should be. And interesting, this is this is turning a very the soldering tip here is turning a very like rusty color instantly. Look at that. Like I clean it and it just I, I need to buy the uh the tinning stuff because it's uh I don't think it's happy. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It was just too bare there for a second. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, let me clip this, uh, wick here. Yes, they are, Jay. Uh, I do have another set I could switch to, if needed. Uh, let's add some more flux to it. Yes, Trina, I was reading your mind. How about that? As if... This crap wants to actually get onto the board there. Alright, so let's, um... Might have to scrape away some goo from uh, from those pads there.
Okay, it's not beautiful right now, but I think I'll be able to clean this up a bit. So I have my scalpel somewhere. Here it is. It's the tinier one. But, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm going to make this bigger on my screen here. Because, uh, unlike uh, Bruce's microscope, mine's not optical. I can only see what's on the screen. So, yeah. Um, just trying to see. Let's see. This one here. Just seeing if that's, like, gunk there. This is where the... The toilet tissue comes into play. So I will put this at the edge of this wood block here and I'll just get all the gunk off of my scalpel at the end of it. Just trying to see if there's Yeah, there's some of this that's gunk from previous capacitors. Oh, sorry, you can't really see that one there. Oh, sorry. See, I can't see everything on the screen here. Lots of star still on the pads. Tip may not have transferred heat enough to the wick do its job. Uh, that may be correct. Uh, I just am getting some of the dirt off. I'm, I'm going to do the... Uh, do some more wicking here because there is solder on these pads. I I do see that. I just want to see if there's some of this black goo and crap that's probably left over from the previous caps. And yeah, so okay, so um oh uh, let me just get out those other soldering tips if I have to use them. I have the package for them here. These are N-series soldering tips. Um, that's all they say. They don't necessarily say if they're leaded or non-lead or whatever. Just says N-series soldering tips. Manufactured in China. Designed for Avon soldering systems 70, uh, 17400 and 17405, which I do not have, but... Um, they look, where's the other ones? They looked kind of similar. Yeah, they look very, very similar to these. I, I, I would not doubt if these fit. These actually, um, I'll show you under the microscope. Uh, these have um, uh, beveled edges, uh, just like the other one I had. The tip is much longer though, which is not, uh, uh, which is is pretty cool so you can see the edge is beveled it's not entirely a sharp bevel oh jeez uh, it's uh as i get flux all over the tip there um i just hate moving this little camera so i'm just trying to work with it here yeah so it's not exactly a, a sharp sharp bevel but um that might work better um with the with the solder wick. Maybe? Should I change it? Alright, let's change it. I'm going to turn the solder iron off for a second. I'll blow the fan on it as if that would make it cool down ridiculously fast, but it probably will not. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's swap that out instead of uh, using the tip I'm using now. We have to let the soldering iron cool for a bit, so I'm not going to burn myself here. How are you guys doing tonight? I know I asked already, but... Oh, boy. Let's see if we can rearrange these windows so I could see something better. Uh, let me get our little logo bigger. This is just dead space here, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying the show. We have 16 people here today. Hello. We had about... We had a little over 20 before. Cool. I'm glad everyone's doing well. I enjoy doing this. It is getting a little late, but uh, we will make some progress here before we have to end the stream. Because unfortunately, I do have to go to work tomorrow morning. 
um, so I cannot pull an all-nighter um, but at least we can uh, get some good work doing here who downvoted this video probably the communists you know <laughs> it was my arch nemesis it was probably Bruce when he saw me not using the right flux. <laughs> Great. I'm, I'm very glad you guys are enjoying the stream. So. Um, let's see. I'm going to let that cool down just a little bit more. i um, just going to make sure. We have, we have our supply of enameled wire here. So if we have to um, bridge any of those traces here, we have both a thin wire and a thick wire. Uh, there is another set of wire um, that I have which is in this little box which I put somewhere right here. Um, that was the uh, very very thin wire that I have. This little spool here. Uh, so we have uh, our selection of wire to choose from. And uh, what is, oh, this is a USB connector. Yeah, I swear the other capacitors were in here, but um, we will find them, I guess, another day. Here's our cursed sheet of paper uh, for the uh, Quadra 840 AV, where we listed <laughs> which capacitors were bridged and shorting the system. That was January 19th, 2020, so that was that was uh, almost a month ago. Jeez. So it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Okay, um, let's just see if I have a pair of pliers handy. I'm going to need that to take out the uh, solder iron tip. Oh, it's good to stand up. Jeez. Alright, let me just go get some pliers here. Okay, here we are. So even if it's not 100% cooled, I will not burn my little fingers off. Okay, move that tip out of the way. Uh, we have two of these. We'll try this one first. Alright, that is very secure. That's not hot, hot, but hot enough that I did not want to hold it. Of course, I dropped it right on the board. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, so that was the old tip there. Classic, uh, classic streaming moment. Good night, Trina. Could have been much worse. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on, shall we? Uh, all right, so I'm going to turn that soldering iron on, get that hot. And uh, we're going to use our wick friend again and try and get the rest of uh, that solder off of that board there. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's move the camera a little bit closer because we have some room here. Oh, the Macintosh 2CX under the desk is blocking the tripod legs to a degree, but uh, let's see what we can make. We can make the best out of this situation here. So we can kind of have a vision and vision thing here. Flux, supercharge the wick too. So this actually has uh, some flux on it, but yes, I will. I will put some flux on the board if that's what you're referring to, Jay. Unless you want me to put flux on top of the wick.
Okay, flux support. All right, just want to make sure. See, you, you stop recapping for a while and you forget a bunch of advice. Drown it. <laughs> okay, so um, let's uh, put a little solder on this iron, I guess, to sort of tin it, maybe. I know I'm like kind of brushing most of it off, but I'm also spreading it to the tip. That looks nice. And okay, so let's. There's there's some more of this wick area I could use. So let me just. Uh, uh, where is the beveled edge? There it is. Okay, so let's just try and get uh, some of this off here. Ah, damn it. Did I break that? No, I think that's okay. I got scared because the, the, the wick slightly moved when the when it was not very, very hot. So. Those are looking a little better. Touching all of them up except for the one that moved a little bit. So. Okay, so that tip seems to be working okay. Alright, so um, now um, I want to um, talk out loud so I don't make any mistakes here. It's all manual focus, sorry. So, I can't tell if that's solder or if it's just gunk there. It is solder. All right, well, let me trim this wick again. Get that off of my damn board. I mean, for wicking, I think your iron temp needs to go up, but the pads will be at risk. Huh. Well, I really haven't had a problem before. Maybe it's just this tip is, is it's larger. Maybe there's more dissipation with the heat. Um, I mean, I, I, it looks to me, and this is, this is just what I'm seeing, it looks to me that...
but this is it's like it's smooth here uh, this this camera is really terrible at reflecting lights so let's try from another angle so you can maybe maybe sort of see what I'm what I'm looking at here So, I mean, they look a bit like scrapes, like I was with the scalpel, but I don't, again, sorry, at the manually focuses here. Um, I mean, I guess there's solder there. Sorry, this camera is very sensitive with its focus. I have, the, I have a manual ring I'm focusing with, a manual wheel. And yeah, I think that's the best I'm gonna get. Now while we're down here at this level, here's the little corrosion bits that I found. Let's go back here. And see? Look at look at that. That doesn't look nice now, does it? And it's not just that one. It is the one next to it too. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of these chips are but they could use some cleaning up a bit uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else on the board that uh, looks problematic but the board looks pretty clean to my naked eye here um, Oh, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to do a multimeter test because that's not, it's coming back to me now. Um, let me let me uh, let me switch cameras here. Sorry. Uh, it's coming back to me now that when I recapped this board, some of the capacitors were uh, coming up as as uh, beeping in continuity mode, and that confused me. So. Let's see. All right, well, capacitor 11, the traces are bridged. So for better or worse, capacitor 11 has a bridged trace from negative to positive. Just capacitor 11. Uh, uh, capacitor 12 does too. So 12 does, wipe these tips, they have some gunk on them. Um, 4 does, great. Uh, 6 does not, 1 does not, 2 does not, 5 does not. Seven does not, but twelve, eleven, and four. Okay, twelve, eleven, and four. Yeah, I'm. I'm thankfully, I didn't recap any a lot of machines because. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at the bottom here. I mean, I see some tiny caps that are not, like, on perfect from the factory, but, like, <sighs> I'm not seeing anything major here. I'm just taking a close look here, see if I could spot anything obvious to my newfound 
eyes. Uh, definitely a trace here that could use some love. Uh, here too, that could be a potential problem. Everything else doesn't look too bad, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not seeing like anything that jumps out to me. At least that's obvious. I mean. One thing that is weird is this cap over here, which I'll remove in a second. Um, this, this, let me get the uh, microphone, mic, microphone, microscope turned on again. This cap, you see the area around it is very dark. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that is uh, the leaking powers of old capacitors there. Because it looks like it's in between the layers there. Now, thankfully... This area of the board, there's not really anything on this side, and not really anything on the other side except, um, well, some grids, which, like, uh, this type of a pattern here. So, is that the 5 volt rail? Don't, don't tell me it's a 5 volt rail. Uh, uh, damn it. <sighs> well, this thing actually chimes, though. I mean, it actually chimes, which is, well, you know, let's let's get the let's get all the bloody caps off. Let's let's not beat around the bush here, huh? But um, yeah, let's let's get. Uh, I, I I should not have just uh, started to try and recap that area. Uh, let's just get all of them out here because um, it's probably it's not not a satisfactory job anyway. So. Alright, let's uh, get some flux on here. We woke Bruce up. Sorry, Bruce. <laughs> uh, where's our other caps here? Here. Okay, so we're going to use our little shield here against these, these ROM chips, and hopefully <laughs> let's get a recap, yes. Let's get all these crappy caps off of here. Crappy, bloody, whatever you want to call them. So I'm just, very exciting, I'm just taking this, uh, this capacitor off here. Ah, focus! Of course, they put the focus ring right next to the stupid uh, holder handle tripod thing of this. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so let's get this little capacitor off here. I'm going to hold the top of it so when it falls off... There we go. So we just lifted that off the board. Alright, um, I'm going to move on just get all of them off and then we'll, we'll deal with, uh, well that's probably not good. That's not good at all. I saw, I see something bad with the printer port here. Let's see if we could show you. So. Sorry, I gotta manually focus here and it's annoying. 
this is the modem port, right? That's the modem port, okay? So we have all the little pins lined up. That's the printer port. So maybe those are touching? They're not touching there. But everything is touching here, and that's bad. That is very bad. Uh, probably something was shoved into there a while back. Hey, Timothy. Oh, it's 6 a.m. there. Oh, boy. That's probably the short right there. I would not be surprised. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to tackle that. Very carefully is the answer. Uh, that would be funny if all the caps I put on was were perfect and I just took them off anyway. But uh, I'm just trying to put this camera so we could take a better look there. And let's adjust the focus. Oh, this thing is really the worst. It's like, hold on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So how am I even going to... Yeah, I mean... So there are eight pins. I'm 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 just I'm just curious. What the hell did that even happen? I mean, jeez, that's pretty bad. Yeah, uh, I'm very tempted to take that entire port off. Um, I do have 8-pin uh, DIN uh, connectors. They're not in this exact um, format, but I could rescue, I could take one of those off of the, the dead boards that I have, which is good to have parts. I'm just looking at the back of anything else. Everything else looks okay. Now that, that definitely is not good. I mean, I don't even know if that metal's touching, to be honest. I'm just going to move them away slightly, because they're, they're, flexi they're fairly flexible. Alright, so nothing is touching each other here. Let's see if uh, we get a different continuity now. Just curious. So that was C11. Nope, still doing it. Unfortunately. C4 is still doing it as well. I thought that was the culprit. I got very excited. Because nothing else from what I could see is touching each other there. It looks all standard. Um, that could probably actually be salvaged if I'm careful, but... Huh. Try from pin 2 on the power plug to ground. Okay. So we have pin 5, and here's pin 2. And ground would be... Um... Uh... Where would I find ground? I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to think on my feet here. Oh. Uh, the fuse, the fuse may be ground because it it connects two to the fuse is ground. But I don't know if the fuse is. I mean, I'm sorry. And any, any metal parts of the connectors. All right, so let's try. Uh. Uh. Yeah. It's, um, don't tell me that's another, that's a, another, well, the fuse does, does, does beep. Yes, yeah, so this is pin two of the power supply. Please, Bruce, tell me that pin two is not five volts. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> the hell! <laughs> the worst luck with these things, I swear. Oh, 
Well, either way, we have to get these caps off. So, let's continue doing that. No matter how screwed this board is, let's get those caps off. The 5 volt curse. Uh, I, I will. I, I'm just very... Um, I would be suspicious because the three pieces that are touching each other are pointed away, but I will I will follow your advice and I will take it off the board. Oh, that's a lot of friggin' pins. Uh, well, we can try. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing something was jammed in there that shouldn't have been. Oh. So you want me to take uh, the printer port off the board first, Bruce, right? So we have eight pins here, and then we have these anchor points. I don't know which I should start with. Uh, should I solder them, or should I use the heat gun? Any advice here? I've never really done this before on... Uh, on a board like this. Guess I could, uh, guess I could wick it up good and, uh, Yeah, let me, let me, I guess use the wick to catch up all of these uh, little solder points here. And then I'll use the heat gun to loosen it up, maybe? Maybe. Uh, John says, have you checked continuity between the pads on the board at the socket? Uh, I'm not sure which socket you're referring to, sir. Sorry. Um, I did try from the second volt, uh, a second pin on the power supply to ground and unfortunately it did connect which I don't think it's supposed to. Close this window just because I could put the chat up here so I could see it better. There we go. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna... I'm going to uh, flux it and I'll... I'll take up the uh, it's too much but Yeah, but um, in order to, even if I just want to repair this socket, um, I'd have to take the solder off anyway. And I, um, it'd be good, I guess, just to just to have it be uh, something I don't have to worry about anyway. But never hurts to cross things off of a list of potential potential things.
Yeah, I don't think it's it's wicking um, with this tip. Uh, I'm at 400 degrees here. What should I go to, Jay? Four hundred uh, Celsius, I believe. Is it? Is that Celsius? Yeah, four hundred Celsius is where I'm at. Yeah, I don't know if it's just this tip or what, but uh, I'll try cranking it up a little bit more. It doesn't help that this solder is like 30 years old. Yeah, that's where I have it set to now, Jay. Let me just, I'm just gonna... I don't think this tip is, uh... I mean, it's melting solder, but, uh... <laughs> I have a feeling this tip is not helping our situation here. Because the, the, uh, cop, the, uh, wick is getting stuck to the board, even at this temperature. Via serial? You're sure it's not via the floppy connector? I mean the uh, HS uh, whatever HD20 connector? Whatever that thing is? Yeah, I, I'm having my doubts about this tip here. Because it's just not... I mean, I, let me just see something here. Let me see what tips I have. Uh... Yeah, these aren't the best, but this was getting much hotter. Let me switch back to this one. I mean, not the best, but it was getting hot, at least getting hotter than the other one was. By golly, it is midnight. Um, I'm going to probably wrap this up fairly soon. Uh, because I have to get up for work tomorrow, unfortunately. Uh, otherwise, I'd stay all night. Um, and I want to take our time with this board. I don't want to destroy this. And we don't want this to be another eight-hour stream, do we? No. <laughs>
All right, let's see if we can, let's switch back to this camera here. Uh, yeah, I might just like get this braid off of this and then call it a night because uh, I'm getting a little tired to be honest and uh, I don't want to be tired while I'm messing around with this board. I don't want to break anything. I don't want to break anything and make it worse than it is. Um, while that soldering iron cools down, uh, we can... Oh, I'll check that out, Aaron. Let's see. If anything is... I can't... Yeah, I can't really... Yeah, these probes don't really go into the connectors enough to for me to properly do that. Let's use our. Whoop, there goes the microscope. So our pliers here to take off this tip. Yeah, this got uh, this got very brown. I'd be surprised if it was just not designed for this type of iron. Maybe it wasn't making exactly the, the contact it was supposed to. Uh, a number of things could, could be the case. Okay, well, I'm glad that, uh, that you think so, Bruce. Because uh, I don't want to panic. I like my 5 volt rail. Okay, so let's just wait for that to warm up a little bit. I mean, the board does look surprisingly clean. Uh, I mean, it's... <laughs> it is 30-something years old, but... Uh... And it does do a chime, which is encouraging, which... I mean, my thought is it has something to do with the new bus slots, but there's a lot of circuitry that drives those new bus slots, so it would not surprise me if the problem lies elsewhere. But All hail Bruce. Bruce knows best. All hail Bruce. Let me put uh, some fresh... Where's those tweezers?
I think what happened is the little copper braid got caught right in a bad spot. That would explain it. Let me, uh, yeah, it just got completely caught where it shouldn't have. Yeah, no, there's, there's not, there's no pad to rip. This is simply like an anchor point on the board. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just put some flux on there and try and heat that up. Where'd my good tweezers go, damn it? Ah. Uh, yeah, I get something good, then I lose it instantly. Well, that was fun while it lasted. <laughs> uh -huh. God dang it. <laughs> it's kind of working. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I'm going to stop tonight. I'm getting tired. Uh, this is not exactly working exactly how I was planning <laughs> at this point. Um, I don't want to, you know, haste makes waste, so let's not rush here. Because um, it is, oh my gosh, it's almost 12.30 here. Um, wow. But uh, we still have about 10 of you here, so if anybody has questions or anything that you'd like to ask before... Uh, we step off here. Um, ask away. Ask away to either me or Bruce or anybody else in the chat. <laughs> Somebody that knows what they're doing. You know, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. Uh, yes, I do have an Apple III. Uh, in fact, I will use this time to paste a video link that you could watch about my Apple III. Yes, that's right. It has a um, it has a profile hard disk, a five megabyte profile hard disk, and this mighty mouse I have has a <laughs> a ball that doesn't like to move. scrolling and we're scrolling and we're scrolling and here we go so click on that here we go so that's the um, that's the video down the Apple 3 the Apple 3 is really neat um, it has some memory issues I think because um, when it boots up it gives me a bit of an error uh, not an error that causes any problems because I, I just think that I'm not using all the memory. The, the memory on that system is actually 256 kilobytes so it's a lot of memory for that system. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's nice. It's, it's funny because I 
got the machine, I didn't do much with it, and then I did a video for that, and then it went back on the shelf. But I'd like to play around with that more. I just don't know. Um, uh, I just, yeah, I think I was looking at that video. I just, I just, I don't have much, not that I don't have much use for the Apple III, but a lot of the software that was out there was like business software and stuff like that, so uh, I'd be more comfortable playing around with the Apple IIe or 2, 2GS or something like that rather than Apple III. Because uh, you have to boot the Apple III a different way, and then to get Apple II software to run on it, you have to do a, a few special things. So, yeah, it's it's a bit of a different animal, but it's it's very nice to have one. I never thought I'd have one, and it just uh, just you know, happened in my lap there, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll take an Apple III. It has the matching monitor too in the the profile disc, which is nice. But yeah, well, uh, let's see. How many people we got now? We got 10 people on the stream still. So anybody else has any questions or anything, you're welcome to ask uh, before we wrap up here. Yeah, the Lisa is really cool. Uh, I don't have a Lisa. Um, they go for a lot of money. Um, I don't think I'd ever necessarily buy one. Yeah, still, still streaming. We're about to wrap up, though, because... Uh, not having much luck here, and it's getting very late, and I have to head to bed soon. Um, but yeah, the leases are pretty cool. Um, they go for a lot of money, and they need a lot of maintenance on them. Um, and uh, although they're really cool, um, I'm probably more comfortable with like a Mac Plus or a Mac Classic. And uh, yeah, I know there's some exclusive software and tools and stuff on the Lisa, but a lot of it was available on the Macintosh too. So again, if, if someone... Um, <laughs> you always catch the last five minutes. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, if if someone uh, gave me a Lisa or I got one cheaply, uh, I'd love to have it to play around with it, but um, not something I'm, I'm actively looking for. Yeah, it's like they, they had some weird names. There was the Macintosh Office System, which was like the Macintosh, the Laser Writer, uh, and, uh, and stuff like that, like for their office network and things. But, yeah. But, um... Yeah, that's uh, so. We're just at, wrapping up with some questions. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to to put them in. Uh, nothing but trouble. So Jake said he he named a he dated a girl Lisa once, but she was nothing but trouble. I think Steve Jobs would agree with you. Um, but no, wait. Lisa was his daughter, not his wife's name. Never mind. I'm getting confused. It's late. I can't think of it anymore. Brain hurt. Words no go. Speak good. <laughs> Ah, uh, we're just killing time here, so I think I'm going to call it. It is 9.40, uh, oh, jeez, yeah, it's really bad here. Uh, it's, we've been streaming for about 2 hours and 45 minutes, so I think that's, uh, that's going to be it, because I, yes, I am going crazy, and I probably badly need some sleep. So, um, <laughs> oh boy. All right, well, um, it's been nice having the stream here. Uh, we'll continue with this Macintosh 2 CX. I won't misplace all of my tools, so we'll be able to follow up fairly quickly. So how about that? <laughs> all right, well, it's been nice chatting with you guys, and uh, I'll hop on Discord for a bit if I can. So nice chatting with you. I will struggle to find the end stream button and without, like, putting my teeth right in front of the camera. How about that? <laughs> See you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.